The Los Angeles Lakers will host the LA Clippers in their first home game. But I'm looking at a team that is reloaded versus a team that underachieved not only last season, <laughs> but also in the offseason when they did not add any overarching significant talent. What do you think about this matchup with the two LA teams? You know, I just, it gives me Clippers will be playing a scrimmage game against the Lakers. I know that's wrong. I know, I know, because I believe that the Lakers could have done more and they did, you know? And so we're talking about this Clippers team that from all, everybody's talking about how deep they are, right? And the talent that they have and the fact that they added John Wall, which is a huge asset to their their roster. And then you look over at the Lakers and it's like, what? But again, the Lakers have the GOAT, LeBron James. And so I think we guess nothing fails with him on the roster, right? It's just not enough. And so I just, I'm not checking for the Lakers right now. Not right now. Not right now. So it's really, for me, it's all about the Clippers and how will they come out in this first game matchup for them this season? How will Kawhi look when he is playing a full, his full minutes? What will PG look like while he's playing his full minutes? Cause he was compromised last season as well. Will you know, John Wall be able to integrate himself into this roster? Will the chemistry and continuity be there? That's what I'm going to be checking for when I'm watching this game. It'd be less for me about the Los Angeles Lakers, and they could potentially win this game. Who knows? I don't know. But it's more so about the Clippers for me because Mm -hmm. of the long-term trajectory that I see for the Clippers versus what I feel and see for the Los Angeles Lakers. So, yeah. Yeah, I think the Clippers are the clear favorite here. I mean, not only in this game, but if you look throughout the whole season, I think the Clippers will be the clear favorite against 90% of their opponents just because of the talent, the sheer talent that they have Mm -hmm. and their bench is so deep and their coach is fantastic. But I do not think that this matchup is a a rivalry anymore. It used to be. (laughs) But the Clippers have beat the Lakers so many times, like back to back. This is just ridiculous at this point. And it's going to be a slaughter. And the only leg up that the Los Angeles Lakers have right now is that they've won 17 NBA championships and the Clippers are forced to play in their building. That's it. That's That's it. it. That's it. That's it. I mean, if you even look at the last time, the last season when the Clippers played the Lakers, who whoever home game it was, it doesn't matter, at Crypto.com. Whoever played, when they played, the Clippers came out victorious four times. It's ridiculous. They had four-time matchups last season, and the Clippers won each time. So what? And we're now talking about a, a different type of Los Angeles Lakers team because it's not the same players. Core maybe, but not – it It doesn't feel good, and no. it doesn't look good. So, yeah, no. The, no. For me, this matchup is more about what the Clippers will look like and if they do lose this game, what type of adjustments will they do? Because Ty Lu will make adjustments. Yes. And how they move forward in the season. But this one, this is not your Battle of L.A. type game. This, for me, is not the Christmas Day game last season where you were biting at the bit to watch it. This is just really how will the Clippers look and can we see their next game? Like, Yes, I think the biggest difference for the Lakers was they'll have a semi-healthy or a healthy Anthony Davis. You know, last season he played just a handful of games. Yeah. And LeBron, AD, and Russ played even, I mean, probably less than 20 games together. So really, in all honesty, we do not know what they look like consistently. However, there's talk that maybe Coach Ham will, you know, play Russell Westbrook off the bench. Now, Russ, as it stands right now, I think he has a hamstring injury. Not sure if this is going to linger on for the season. Is he healthy? Will he start the season? Will he start? (laughs) Is he going to be in the starting lineup? That's the question on the table right now. Okay, so if he's not in the starting lineup, who is? Well, Coach Ham tried Max Christie, and that was so disrespectful. This is what I'm talking about. You, you, who, who, who going to be in the starting lineup if it's not going to be Russ? I don't get it. No, you start Russ. Now, I didn't say he had to play starting minutes, but you start him. Yes. Right? Like, he's going to come off the bench. He's going to be leading the second unit. What? No, I didn't that, like that it. is totally disrespectful, and I didn't like it. I don't agree with it. If you if if the Lakers organization is not happy with Russell Westbrook, trade him. Yes. You know, I go hard for Russell Westbrook, and he did not have the best season, but at least he was available. At least he stayed healthy all season. 
But, you know, Russ hasn't come off the bench since 2008 with his rookie season. Don't start this now. Don't do it. It's disrespectful to him. And I don't know if Coach Ham is under the pressure of LeBron James. Since this is his team. Is he is he feeling the media pressure? You know, the spotlight is bright in Los Angeles. And they have to win games. And this is his first season coaching. So I can imagine the pressure that he's under to make all the adjustments. But I can tell you right now, having Russ come off the bench is not one that he should make. I I 100% agree with you on that. Now, if he starts, that's fine. I am not saying that Russ should maintain starter minutes, but you must start him in the game. He must be a a major part of the success if you guys want to maintain him on your roster. Like, what is, what are we doing? What are we doing? I don't, I don't like it. I don't like it. And you know what though? And if Coach Han want to know how it feels, you better call Vogel. Oh, 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 uh oh. You better call Vogel. So, Coach Ham, you gonna? I, I hope you do something different than what Vogel did. Because right now, right now, you, this decision feeling real Vogel for me. <laughs> I think in the end, I'm looking forward to the Clippers continue to mollywop the Los Angeles Lakers, and it needs to happen. <laughs> Let me tell you, it needs to happen because the Lakers need to make changes to their roster. Yeah, and there's no better time than now. Like, what are we waiting for? If it's if they're gonna send Russ to Indiana and get Buddy Hill and Miles Turner, then do it now. Be fair to the player. Don't allow Russell Westbrook to suffer another game and not be able to play his righteous position as point guard for the Los Angeles Lakers, so that it, it's just gonna ruin his stock even further. I agree. I agree 100 percent with that. But you know, one thing I am looking forward to. I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward to see how the Clippers uh, d- defend Patrick Beverly. I <laughs> cannot wait to see Patrick Beverly get under somebody's skin on the Clippers uh-huh. on that night. I can't wait. Patrick Beverly is going to be in raw form as he should, right? Yes. And he knows that he knows those players on that roster. What will he do? to get them out of character. That's what I can't wait to see. That's going to be the highlight entertainment of my whole night while I'm watching that game. I'm like, ooh, when Patrick Beverly going to go in. So, yeah, that's something I'm looking forward to just to be, you know. Because <laughs> yeah. he's a play for them, right? And he doesn't yeah. anymore. He went to the Timberwolves. Now he's back in L.A. Mm, let's see. I know. Okay, yeah, I'm going to be looking for that too. But, you know, <laughs> Ty Lue has some decisions to make. You know, they recently acquired John Wall, but you got old man Reggie being consistent. Reggie Jackson carried the Clippers when PG and Kawhi were out. Yes, he did. Should, you know, is Coach Ham and Coach Lou in the same position where they're trying to determine which point guard is going to start for them? It's definitive to me. It's Reggie Jackson. I stand Mm. Reggie Jackson. He's earned it. And the, the four wins against the Lakers last season, Reggie Jackson was on the floor. Like, don't do Reggie that way. Now, if he loses it, I get it. But he should already earned it. So he should start the season as being the starting point guard. And John Wall, as effective as we w- want him to be, he hasn't played more than 20 games in about a couple of years, a couple of seasons. So give him an opportunity to get his, you know, his footing back in a full basketball game on a new team. I believe that the season may end with John Wall standing, but it should not begin with him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And I flip flop with this. I said, oh, maybe it should be John Wall. You know, I think I was caught up in the hype of John Wall being in Los Angeles. But yeah, Reggie has earned it. And I think Ty Lue will make the right decision. And Ty Lue, I trust. And Ty Lue, I trust. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about Dennis Schroeder coming back to the Los Angeles Lakers? Well, I, I don't think it matters now because he's out with a finger injury and they suspect that he'll be out for some time. But, you know, after fumbling his bag, even though he denies it, come on, Schroeder. Everybody know you. Come on. Everybody knows the Lakers offered him, what was it, $84 84 million? million? Yeah, everybody knows that. He's he's denying that he fumbled the bag? Yeah. I guess you got got a safe face. It makes sense for him to deny that. (laughs) Yeah. But we all know the facts. Yes. Oh, man. Hurt my, think about it, just hurts my heart. For him to get what with the, when he re-signed with the Lakers? Uh, was it was it even 2.1 i mean <laughs> welcome back Schroeder. hopefully your injury will heal and you'll be able to show 
and you know get another offer for 80 million i just don't mm. wow yeah so the cleveland cavaliers will go into toronto to face the raptors during nba opening week how do you think the new look cavaliers will look against a very consistent very continuous roster of the toronto raptors fine they will be fine they were actually okay without donovan mitchell let's just not forget that right donovan mitchell was brought over to fill in some gaps but the cleveland cavaliers were okay without him and last season when the cleveland cavaliers matched up against the toronto raptors the T cleveland cavaliers were successful three out of the four times they've played so and we're talking about the same roster really for the Cavs, and pretty much the same roster for the Raptors. So for me, mm -hmm. I think it's going to be a great matchup. Um, both have a lot to prove. Both are going to be fighting for a one through six spot. Let's just be honest. Not one of these teams are going to be fighting for a plan. No, 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 no. One through six. And where they rank within that is what they'll be fighting for. And so it starts with this because in the end, in the postseason, they could potentially be playing up against one another. So I think it's going to be great. I don't see – I see it being exactly what it should be at the opening night of their game. I'm looking at five potential all-stars for the Cleveland Cavaliers, but the only issue I see going up against the Toronto Raptors is I'm looking at a small backcourt with the two Ds. Yeah. But good for them. They have enormous bigs backing them up. You know what I mean? But but what 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 against um Fred Van Fleet, who was six one as well? I mean, it's not like the backcourt of the Raptors is that huge. Am I am I mistaken? Not against this particular matchup because Fred Van Fleet is right same height as the rest of them. Yeah. As, as the two D's as you coined, you know, Donovan <laughs> Mitchell and Darius Garland. Uh -huh. Yeah. So no, I don't that's why I'm saying I think this matchup is okay, right? I don't think that any team, I just know that the Cavs. Because they were so successful against the Raptors last season, I don't see why that wouldn't carry on. Now, with the insertion of Donovan Mitchell, that can be something that the Cavs may need to adjust to. I just don't want Donovan Mitchell. I want Donovan Mitchell to find his spot, find his place on this roster, because this roster without him was solid. Yes. It wasn't perfect, but it was solid. And so now you're coming in, filling in the gaps, putting in the holes, you know, drawing in more defenders so it leaves somebody else open. That's what he can do because Donovan Mitchell is a threat on the court. You may have to double team him. What does that do? It leaves somebody else open to make a play. So he does add an additional element to the Cavs that will give them a leg up when it comes to offense. But yeah, no, I, I just think that the Raptors will have to work to win this game, just like the Cavs will have to work to win the game. So, yeah. For me, but it's I think equal that, footing. Well, I think the Cavs will have to make the bigger adjustment because who's going to contain Scotty? I, I mean, who? Mm, Scotty is relentless. Good point. And he's coming down the pipe, and um, you can't leave OG or Siakam open because they're going to burn you. Good point. I, I just want to know, is it going to be, I mean, who are we talking about? Is Kevin Love going to come in and do something? Uh, okay, first of all, no. Robin Lopez? Uh, no, but you have Jared Allen and Evan Mobley. They're going to be in foul trouble is what I'm saying. <laughs> Probably. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Okay. That's a fair way to look at it. I, I can't dispute that. Mm-hmm. You have Isaac Okoro. Come on now. Yeah, Isaac's nice, but... Like I said, who's going to stop Scotty? You shouldn't have. That's the thing about it. Are they going to focus on stopping Scotty or will they focus on containing OG and Siakam it, and let Scotty win the game and, and see if he can do it? But the thing is, OG was in and out last season, too. That's my point. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, with, with the healthy see. OG in a consistent roster on the Raptors, like it, it can go either way. It can go either way. But this is the same thing. Okay. Okay, I, I can see the point. We'll see what the full roster looks like, right? This is opening night. Again, I think opening week, opening night games for these teams will be the baseline that fans will look to see how what they need to what type of adjustments they need to make in the, in you know in the upcoming games. This is no different than that. So for me, opening week games are less about the wins and loss, more about the continuity and chemistry and the playmaking and the adjustments. Right. Because one game is not going to get you to 
win, a one game win on opening week night will not get you to the playoffs. <laughs> no. But it can set a foundation on how your team will manage their opponents moving forward and how fans will view you as a team and, and the hopes of you getting to the playoffs. So, yeah. Yeah, I think that, again, these games on this night is about that. more Not so much for me about the wins and losses. You know, last season, Phoenix Suns had a hard time getting by the Dallas Mavericks. And Dallas Mavericks made it to the Western Conference Finals. I was actually pulling for the Phoenix Suns because I thought the matchup between Golden State and the Phoenix Suns would have been a better matchup for us to see. However, the Suns have an opportunity to redeem themselves against the Dallas Mavericks during opening week. Is it possible? Do you think it can happen? I think it can happen. I think so. I still am rooting for the Mavs. The Suns will have to regain my trust again. They have disappointed me for the past two seasons, right? So I really, really was rooting for them to win their championship in oh, 2021 season. I am not going to hold you. And then in 2022, with the same, they, they, they brought it back, ran it back, and went home in the semifinals. Now they running it back again. I, I just don't know. So I'm not completely sold on this Suns team for the 2023 season. I hope they for the best. But what I'm really excited for is the Mavs because the Mavs, number one, have Luka, who Luka plus anybody else can be an amazing uh, player. They Yes, they did lose Jalen Brunson, but you know what? Spencer Dinwiddie, come on, just do what you do best. Then they add a Christian Wood. I just can't wait to see what that looks like. See, I'm excited about what that looks like. And I'm not excited about what the Suns are going to bring to the court. Now, I'm not saying that they won't be a great team. I just, it's not new for me. I've, it's, mm -hmm. it's not new. And now Jay Crowder wants to be traded. I just, and then Aiden finally, finally got his contract, which he probably will perform amazing as he waits to January to request a trade. I'm just, oh my hand. goodness. Well, you know, the Suns did not add any new pieces. I mean, after getting eliminated by the Mavs in the semifinals, mm -hmm. they were it was almost like, well, let's try it again. But see, for me, I always have a strong belief in Chris Paul and his leadership. Like, for me, it's like continuity and chemistry. It could reign supreme over mm -hmm. something new, right? Having mm -hmm. to learn how to play with your teammates again. Something about just the veteran leadership coupled with Monty Williams on the mm -hmm. sidelines. I just believe in the Phoenix Suns. And you know Devin Booker has gotten much better over the offseason. If you think he's going to be the same player, I think he might be. be sadly mistaken. What's that? He said it better not be. He can't yeah. be. Yeah. Yeah. I really like their bench. You know, the Phoenix Suns. I just, I think they're going to be okay. I hope so. I hope so. And I agree with you on the Chris Paul um, veteran leadership on his ability to rally the, the players, his craftiness as he plays. My concern with, and we've seen in the past two seasons, is that as the season progresses and as we get into closer to the playoffs and into the playoffs, he becomes injured. And what happens? The team falls apart. So can they, for the third time around, right, be able to withstand a potential injury from mm -hmm. Chris Paul and continue to move forward. That's just what I'm saying. I'm looking forward to seeing that, right? So we'll see. And this this is the third year of his three-year $90 million mm -hmm. deal. Mm -hmm. So I do believe we will see a different squad come next season. The third time could mm -hmm. be the charm. But if anyone can get DeAndre Ayton to buy in and to actually stay past January, I believe it's Chris Paul. I will. I believe it will be Chris Paul and where he, Ayton, sees the Suns by the end of the season. If the Suns start off the season uh, mediocre, which I don't believe they will, they haven't in the past, but if there is no hope for a championship deep run, um, Aiden will be asking for his trade in January, as he <laughs> should, right? Because he may, but they have a new owner. It's just uh, they have life back into their organization that may help them. It may help them. So we'll see how it goes. But yeah, the Suns, we'll see, we'll see. But me, I'm still more excited about what the Mavs are going to bring. And I do not believe that the Mavs 2022 season was a one-time thing. 
Oh, well, they're, they're definitely the better team as it relates to especially this matchup. Mm-hmm. I mean, when you talk about Luka Doncic, then they're getting back Tim Hardaway Jr., who they did not have, and they mm-hmm. still defeated the Phoenix Suns. Right, right. Yeah, right. they stole JaVel McGee. And JaVel McGee was on the Suns last season. Yes, yes. And I do believe Jason Kidd has figured out how to get the best out of Luka Doncic. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then Luca's coming into this season body ready. Like he is just two to three weeks fresh off of his last uh, game, you know, when he was playing overseas in, in, in Europe, I believe it was in Europe or Sylvania, wherever he was playing um, for the summer. He's fresh off of that. Fresh, you know, a he, he, couple of weeks rest. He'll be ready. He went too far last season not to go further. I can't wait. Do you think that the Mavs will truly miss Jalen Brunson? No, no. But what I'm seeing, what I'm seeing from Luca and and his backup and Spencer Dinwiddie, I don't think so. And I haven't seen much from Jalen with the Knicks. (laughs) So I think the Mavs will be just fine without him. (laughs) 